So welcome, Gabby, to the Recruitment Marketing Sales Podcast. It's fabulous to have you. Looking forward to today's chat. It'll be so much fun. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> And I know, I know we're going to come out, have to really manage ourselves on time here, aren't we? But listen, there's lots that we want to talk about today. Um, and so, but maybe before, before we dive into that conversation, you know, um, thanks for your time today. And, um, you know, as CEO of Tooled Up Raccoons, what a fantastic name that is, by the way. There's got to be a story behind that, I'm sure. Um, but maybe before we get we get started, how about just giving the listeners, um, because I'm sure some people listening will have met you, they'll have heard you, uh, they might even probably have been on some of your training, uh, but maybe just give us a bit of a background as to how you got to be the CEO of Tool the Raccoons. My journey actually is a little bit of a unique one, okay? So when I graduated university, I actually went into investment banking. I worked at JP Morgan and I worked my way from back office to middle office, to front office, experiencing a variety of things. Yeah. But the core center and passion that I adopted along that journey was around operational excellence, right? I was an operation manager for our top 25 hedge funds in EMEA. So it was a really big job and it was so cool. But I realized during that time that this energy and vibe, let's be honest, was a bit much for banking. Good, good <laughs> so investment I, banking. I, yeah, it doesn't. I, don't, I love it. They hired someone to kind of shake things up, but then they were a bit like, whoo, what do we do with a Gabby? And it was like, actually, there's only so much I can do here. So I left banking, joined a startup for a little while, um, and decided that actually I wanted to do my own thing. I've always wanted to run my own business. So in the background, my husband had launched a recruitment business, and he'd been running it for years by the time I joined him. But he'd been nagging me, being like, Gabs, I need you. My operations is a little bit bit ropey could you come in and sprinkle some operational magic on us so i joined our mobile robotics recruitment business went in there literally tore the whole thing up in true gabby fashion because i was just like coming in without the recruiter there yeah i just saw the world so differently and in during that process one of the elements that i found once i finished cleaning everything up was that actually sourcing candidates agnostic of how much tech you have was still really inefficient Right. And wasn't as productive as it could be. Mm. So I looked at Mitch and went, I'm going to go and fix that. So as Tool.Raccoons was, bo- Tool. was born, so it's now what we call the sourcing armory for recruiters. So it's really helping them Fantastic. get the most from their technology stack. And yep. that's now where, where I come from and how I've ended up geeking out on all things candidate sourcing. And being incredibly passionate about it. Um, as well. And and I think, you know, I, I noticed one of the posts that you uh, popped out on LinkedIn this, LinkedIn this morning. And you're right, certainly something, you know, we notice is that, you know, recruiters, um, you know, that there is so much tech available in all different aspects of the business, you know, be that marketing automation, be that sourcing, there's a lot of tech. And it feels like every month there's a new piece of tech coming out. Uh, and I think, you know, certainly, a lot of companies are very much embracing that and it's a bit of a minefield sometimes isn't it in terms of knowing what to invest in um and so if we narrow this tech conversation down to sourcing um you know if you're going to invest then certainly when i make any kind of investment in our business you know we want it to to develop, to develop. We want it to generate, you know, a really good ROI. We want to be able to use it. And, you know, let's be honest about it. You know, many of us um, are those kind of people who love bright and shiny objects and will jump on the bandwagon of all the kind of like the latest sourcing tech and everything. But I guess it's kind of like, is it all about the tech? And do we use the tech? in the same way for what we commonly kind of refer to as active and passive candidates. Because, you know, we we both know we were chatting about before we started that, you know, that there's still a lot of noise in the market about a shortage of candidates. And is there? It's if I I break this down in kind of new questions there, but no, I'm not let's go, right? I'm literally buzzing on this one. So if we take kind of tap 
tech stack element first and we actually yeah. focus more on the candidate sourcing piece okay of our tech yeah I think it is incredibly challenging for recruitment agencies and actually in-house teams to navigate what is the right tech for them. I know you say like things are dro like tech is dropping like monthly and actually with ChatGPT dropping in the middle of our laps, we've got things popping up like daisies and it's just like, what do I need? What don't I need? And like, is that really shiny or is it going to do what it's going to do? And you're going to end up with a yeah. lot of people who are going to get the things a lot of people are getting their things burnt and then they're like I don't want to invest in anything anymore because I bought some duds and the problem is is the technology may or may not be dodgy question mark right first check if you are looking at a new piece of tech check there's terms and conditions in place and SAS agreements if there's not either of those on a website hop off and do not download it I've seen right. too many businesses get into bed with new direct tech that doesn't have the legal legal parameters to protect you. So step number one, team. Wow, great but I think tip. It's, it's it's really dangerous though because what they're doing is they're signing up, putting their payment details in, not thinking there's no T's and C's, there's nothing. You're just handing over details. I mean, Fine. like, come on, guys! Like, you guys, like, stop getting addicted to the shiny stuff and just take a mm. deep breath. And I think with anything that comes to technology and investing in technology, it may look shiny. Your best mate sitting over there who also runs a recruitment agency or is it a TA may have adopted something, but that doesn't mean you need it. Okay. Yes. I think it's always about recentering and going, right, if I look at my operational procedures from beginning to end of the candidate process or the recruitment cycle, should we call it, mm. where are there gaps? Yeah. Right. Ask yourself, and the odds are, if the piece of tech you're looking at right now is not a gap, don't fill it with more tech because I can't tell you how many teammates within those recruitment teams are like, stop giving me tech. I've got so much. Yeah. And it's because yeah. they just overload it. It has to have a need. If there is a need and an urgency for it, weirdly enough, you will find the right tech. You will be yeah. asking smart questions, not just go, oh, that's shiny. Let's adopt it. Thanks very much. You'll be yeah. asking really smart mm. questions. And he will adopt it because it will be a pain they want to address. And yeah. I know it's hard when it comes to sourcing technology, right? These demos, right? I worked in a tech startup in the middle, as I mentioned, and the tech, the demo environments wasn't live. They're pre-made mm. demo environments. They look very shiny, they look very beautiful and everything works seamlessly. But you need to be able to say, right, I'm looking at a candidate search platform, right? Candidate discovery, yeah. whether you're looking at your LinkedIn plans, whether you're looking at a new CRM, whether you're looking at a job board, I don't care. Mm. But when you go to those demos, like when I talk about smart questions, I suggested to someone earlier, I was like, build a really advanced Boolean string and give it to the sales and demo person and see what happens within their tech stack. Or give them a job, right? A job you know you filled with a certain candidate, tell them to run the search and see if they pull back the same candidate that you did. Did they do it quicker or slower than you did? What are you looking at? What's the yeah. accuracy? Really put them to the test. Because yeah. like when I do demos for our test, I'm like, this is the outcome. Did it win? Did it not? If it didn't win, then you've got something more efficient this end. So it's about taking that deep breath. It's about asking smart questions and just remembering mm. that with every piece of tech out there, you are the expert on your desk. You yeah. are the expert. Push mm. them to prove they can add something. And I think that's how I did it when we ran an agency. And even today, owning a tech company, I can't tell you how much stuff I get flogged on a regular basis. A bit. Yeah. And again, I always yeah. either stress, is there a gap? Is there a need? If there isn't a gap mm. or a need, I'm not having a chat. Yeah. Right? And I think that's yeah. the process we have to go down. Does that make sense? No, absolutely it makes sense. And just thinking about smart questions then, you know, what one question is, I guess, when I talking to business owners and recruiters and, and listening to their conversations, um, you know, particularly talking about marketing as well, you know, often you know, people will come to us because they're short on candidates. It's a candidate short market. Um, you know, they're struggling to attract passive candidates because they don't necessarily want the active candidates. Um, and, and so there's this this whole, you know, categorization of candidates active passive is that valid is one question and you know 
do you search differently? So should you do a different kind of search for a passive candidate because you don't want to pick up the active ones? Interested in your thoughts on that? Oh, so this is a fun one for me. And this is where I think you're going to really tell that I wasn't a born and bred recruiter because this hasn't been indoctrinated into my mind. My view is everyone's in until they're out. Everyone's tell us in. more. So what I mean by that is we live in a world in a, for some reason in recruitment, we talk about active and passive candidates, right? We talk about them as if they're these magical creatures that have very different perspectives on job hunting. And in some respects, they do. If someone is actively looking, let's say they've been made redundant or whatever, they just fancy a change. If you yeah. rang them and said, I've got an opportunity for you, the odds are they're going to be more kind of like, OK, cool, I'm looking. I kind of need a position. Let's have a chat. OK, so yeah. in terms of their desire to talk to you, they may be higher. But a passive candidate, just because they haven't gone, hello, I would like a job, doesn't mean they're not looking quietly. All right. Yeah. I am a prime example of this. I was in investment banking. There was for about a couple of years, I was like, do you know what? If someone rang me today, I'd jump. I would jump right. out of the window and come and you in a heartbeat. OK, mm. but I never put that anywhere. I, I was not a recruiter, so I didn't understand these concepts of like flagging yourself as open to work or like what you could do now do with LinkedIn. Right. You just sit mm. there quietly, you get on with your job. And if it's appropriate, I assumed a recruiter would call me. Massive assumption. Now I'm the other side. That's not really how this cookie crumbles. <laughs> but there are people out there who aren't within your field, who aren't a recruiter, who don't understand the recruitment process. And yeah, therefore, you're going to miss it if you go into this world of I'm only going to filter by open to works. No, stop it. Everyone else is doing it, right? Those mm. candidates, not only have up a thousand and one times, they're not the only people out there on the market. So my view is you should be hunting to create, to find a true talent pool, right? So what's your yeah. full talent pool? And then you dissect it into manageable trunks. If you want to go to the, mm. I'm going to do the open works first, Merry Christmas, fill your boots. I'm a bit do the reverse. Go for the people that haven't flagged themselves as open to work, but are exceptional for the role based on the parameters I've put in. Let's yeah. have a chat with them. And if no one else has contacted them, and this is the million dollar point, if no one else has contacted them, the odds are they're probably going to want to talk to you because no, they haven't been abused by five, six, yeah, seven. Yeah. Got there. So sometimes yeah. like, you just step back. And that's why my view is everyone is in until they're out. Yeah. Attract, find them and go for them. And go for it. And so, I mean, you know, talking about the, the different kind of options of, you know, sourcing tech, um, you know, something that, that we were chatting about was, you know, people, I guess, companies thinking that they're making a recruiter's life easier if they are building in almost like, you know, automated sort of Boolean searching and everything, because that's that's what a recruiter wants. Mm -hmm. And is that really what a recruiter wants? You know, is that going to work for them in the best way it might, Gabby? Or is there another option? So it's a really interesting one, and it's a bit of a mind game on this one, right? Okay, so within the world of recruitment, we're very much speed. Speed is everything. I need to save time. I'm time yeah, scared. Absolutely. I need to hit the end of the yeah. Let's run a million miles an hour. So in their minds, what they need is something that you put a button in, and it either creates the Boolean in the back end so you never have to see it, yeah. or it creates a Boolean, you see it, and you're not going to do anything with it because it's going to find you the best candidates quickly, okay? Yeah. The limitation that mindset is you end up with platforms that are auto generating boolean very very quickly but they're actually limiting your ability to dig deep because you become complacent you assume because of technology vomited out your boolean string that is the ultimate hunt and in many instances and you can imagine how many auto builders i have played with i imagine to someone who just yeah, I've, te I've tested pretty much all of them. Where I can sneak in, I've tested them. <laughs> when you look at them and you look at the results, as someone who's stepped back and gone, that's not enough, some of them are mind-blowingly disgusting. And I have literally wanted to scream at my computer and shake the founder of the company and being like, you clearly don't understand candidate sourcing. This is inadequate and you're fooling a lot of recruiters to think it is adequate, right? It it's a pain point of my mine and I get very defensive and protective around the recruitment community that I'm trying to look after. Mm. But 
the thing is with those auto filters, they are filters in fancy dress. Right, that's how I describe it. Okay, right. So a lot of those auto builders are just to take all the filters and push them into a boolean string, which is fine as a step one. Right, it's fine. Yeah. But it's not going to see you embracing candidate uniquenesses. So spelling mistakes, hyphenation, pluralization of words, it's not giving you that. And there are no. CRMs, for example, out there that have now created, and I saw this at Rec Expo, and I tried to stay as calm as humanly possible in a public environment. I came home <laughs> and ranted to my husband instead. But what they're doing is they're actually creating Boolean in the back end. So you'll put a job title in, and in the back end of the system, they're creating this Boolean string for you to run. The problem with that is you're out of control of your search. You're completely out of control. Yeah. So if the search doesn't mm -hmm. bring you back who you're expecting, there's nothing you can do about it. You've got your hands tied behind your back. So yes, you get that initial speed to hunt, but in yeah. terms of the depth, quality, and the accuracy, cool, and also the transferability, right? If you have a string that's hidden behind your CRM, but you're also hide hunting in a job board and a social media platform and God knows where else, you don't want that boolean string lost in the back. You want to go, this is my string, and I'm going to use it across each of these. And that is where you start getting that long-term efficiency and depth and accuracy to your hunt. And that's right. the bit I think so many people miss when yeah. they're looking at sources. Yeah. And I guess the reality is, in, in some ways, is that unless you – it's one thing to say, yes, I use boolean searching, isn't it? And, and like anything, it's, you know, what what is an individual's level of competency at being able to use Boolean searching? And so that that kind of like, you know, that very quick thing of, you know, well, our software will do that Boolean search for you is it sounds good, doesn't it? And it's like, but but what level of search is is that at? I mean, you know. What what what's your general experience? You know, working in this area now for a good few years. What's your general experience, perhaps, of the the level of competency that that people have, uh, you know, around yeah. Boolean and being able to use it as well as, uh, let's say, I know you would love people to be able to use it. Can you tell I'm addicted to this stuff? Um, so I would say, in general, people. They kind of sit either extreme, right? We have people who've heard of Boolean and literally want to go and dive in the ocean and never talk to me again. So like, oh, it's really hard. Right. It's yeah. Hard. Uh, uh, right. And you can tell they've had training by people who made it feel like the hardest thing in the world. And right, I'm right. definitely yeah. not that hard. I'm like, let's bring it back to basics in the team. Let's bring this back to reality. It's all cool. I've got your back. And then you have people who are like, oh, I've done a couple of YouTube videos. I've watched a couple of YouTube videos. I understand it's and or not, brackets, quotations, asterisks in some platforms and yada, yada, yada. And that's just Boolean and then we move on to X-ray. So you have people who have seen it. But the problem is, is it's taking that knowledge and applying it to the technology you've got. Yeah. So not every piece of technology accepts Boolean in the same way. Okay. Right. And that's just a reality. So depending, I mean, if we take our famous friend, Mr. LinkedIn or Mrs. LinkedIn, I don't know which way you want to call it, person. Um, so what ends up happening is each of the plans on LinkedIn have different Boolean allowances. So I've got clients who are on basic, which have basically five operators. So five handles mm -hmm. or not, and you're pretty rude into that. Then you've got sales nav, which is 15. And then you're starting to go up to light recruiter. That's thousands of characters across various fields. You've then got CRMs who are like, right, you can put Boolean in this field and this field. And you've got, there is a particular aggregator out there that is like, okay, instead of using and and a bracket with ors in, you have to have and this and that and the other. So it's not necessarily just understanding the principles yeah. around Boolean. It's also understanding the words you should be capturing and also how that Boolean interacts within the platforms that you're searching in. And mm. it's only when you understand the combination of the techniques and your platforms that you can really go, ah, that's how I hunt through this. Let's go hunting. Yeah. And you can do it in a really efficient way. Yeah. And that's where the gap comes in I'm seeing with people. And so, I mean, it's just thinking then, and this is like a minefield, isn't it, for, for business owners who are doing the investing. So you know, yeah. how does somebody know um, what they're investing in? And if they don't know what questions to ask, where do you start? I mean, honestly, the first thing I would start with is actually before you invest in any technology, look at how your team are sourcing. 
right look at how they're hunting look at understanding yeah. that element of it because in my mind agnostic of how niche you are agnostic of whether you're candidate rich or candidate poor right now you need to have the optimum search full stop yep. exclamation mark that's the end of it so yep. you need to start by actually looking at how your team is sourcing Mm -hmm. Once you've understood that, and that's something we help businesses do, like I do free 30 minute sessions with business leaders going, come on, talk to me. What tech stack have you got? Where are things yeah. going wrong? Let me help you ask the smart questions. Yeah. But once you've got that, then you're okay. We need to level up because we're not doing what we should. So you should be empowering your team with the full sourcing toolkit, which is what I call it, right? The Boolean, the x-ray, knowing how to push and pull. And mm. then once you have that, then you're in a power play position where you can walk into a tech stack and go, I want you to demo. I want you to use this and run your search. And you'll understand what you're looking at. You'll understand well, what you're yeah. seeing and you'll understand the questions to ask. But you can't yeah. skip it. You can't skip it. Because if you don't understand how you are sourcing, you don't understand yeah. how to your candidate, I could pretty much tell you anything and you'd nod and smile at me and go, yeah, Gabs, okay, cool, that sounds amazing, let's do it. doesn't mean it's right, but you yeah. need to knowledge up before you go and engage that kind of dialogue. Yeah. Because I promise you the person at the other end of the line, and I've seen this a lot with a couple of um, CRMs I've tried to get data out of on their Boolean, the salespeople don't know. They don't understand um, Boolean. They don't understand yeah. it. So when you ask them to do it and you're like, your search isn't right, that search isn't going to help me. Like you don't yeah. want another platform that you're just filtering on. No. Right? Because yeah. the other thing, if you think about this, I was talking to a client earlier and they've got, four job boards, they've got LinkedIn recruiter, and they've got their CRM. And right now what they're doing is going into each of them and applying different filter combinations depending on the platform. And I was like, why? Why are you doing this? I was like, do all of them accept Boolean? And they were like, yeah. I was like, well, why don't we build some smart searches? And they literally could create two, three searches, do, 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 run it through, yeah, it down and find yeah. a talent. Again, but it's understanding that before yeah. you go into a tech platform dialogue yeah. and then you can push them. I want you to run this string in there and tell me what happens. I want you to do this in this, but understanding how to push and pull your search to test the strength of a piece of technology before mm. you go and throw cash at it yeah. is definitely the smarter way around. But I think people, I don't know why in recruitment, we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah sourcing is a thing we do. But it's like, well, actually, you're nothing without talent. You are nothing without talent. It doesn't matter how many mm. databases of millions and millions of millions of candidates you have. If you can't source them efficiently, literally nothing else matters that you're doing right now. No, I mean, and just kind of like going back to that example, you know, I, I guess what what I'm kind of like visualizing is, you know, out of the CRM and, and LinkedIn and then the four different job boards, that's six six kind of like sources, isn't it? Then the volume of candidates that that potentially could result in and how effectively do you then go through all those things all those all those candidates i mean that must be huge it's an interesting one and i think the challenge you hear even saying that right people are like oh my gosh how do i get into one tech stack so there's aggregators out there those platforms that sit in the middle and pull all this stuff in and go yeah Ta -da, you put a search for your candidates in and that's what people are going to be hearing when they're hearing you say that out loud on a podcast right that's what they're going to hear and that's what they're going to resonate with the thing is the thing that worries me about aggregators is there are ones out there that as soon as you use an aggregator that sits in the middle and connects to all your different job boards and CRMs, mm. your allowances of Boolean strings are dropped. So ah, I didn't realize that until I saw someone put a social media post out being like, ah, oh, if you search on our platform, this is your character limit, on these different platforms. So I, I was like, no, it's not. No, it's not. Like Bullhorn currently is an unlimited Boolean string. I'm like, wicked, crack on, go fill Bullhorn full of Boolean, right? They can take it. And Total Jobs is 2,000, but this platform, there was an aggregator, they had about a third of the character count they could use in their Boolean string. So although you've cut a corner uh -huh. by putting everything into a one platform, your quality of your search is like, it's completely skewed. So you're going to have to run multiple yeah. searches for people. But the best way, and this is large reason why we developed the tech and the way we did is our Chrome extension sits over the top of a tech stack, 
Okay, so there is a lot of focus around like going into each and getting the optimum result. So focus, go into LinkedIn and go, right, this is where I want to get out of this. Go into your job board and focus and hunt through there and make it manageable to work your way through. Yeah. So what we've done is this Chrome extension, you build a library, right? There's lots of other cool stuff it does within it. But the element of it, the main element is here's your library. Take your strings, build the ultimate candidate centric string you can. And then literally be able to pick it up and drop it into whichever platform you need it. So you right. get that focus, you get that quality. And the other advantage of that is if you retain, if you focus within the platform you're searching in, you can accommodate the nuances in those platforms in your searches. So what accepts an asterisk as a wild card, what doesn't. So you can actually tweak your strings to accommodate those variances, get yeah. better results out of it. But you could also calculate your ROI from those platforms. Because as soon as it's aggregated, it's very difficult for you to go, ah, oh, this job board was absolutely useless, but this one, hello, moneymaker, right? Mm. And again, if you're optimizing the search, and I call it optimizing it, right, getting a really true inclusive search that is broad but relevant, right? Because I think yep. sometimes there's this fear, this mentality in recruiters, they're like, I only want five, and then they'll end up with thousands and they'll freak out because they're just doom scrolling through candidates. But an optimum Boolean string is actually going to give you the, the benefit of a, or inclusive. So it's going to go, this is your true relevant talent pool. Now let's go hunting. Right. And yeah. that's the gift you can get. You know how to hunt within those platforms. And it is, yeah. it is a thing you have to learn. And I think when people stop learning, and this is kind of a side point, really, while it crosses my mind, when people stop learning how to source, and they stop thinking about it. When the search doesn't go as they expect, they go, oh, the text broken. Nope, there's no candidates in there. Nope, 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 it's all rubbish. I need to get a new text back. That's the conversation that takes place. But what should follow that is show me your strings. Show me how you're hunting. Show me what's going on within your search. Yeah. But when you stop learn teaching and empowering your team to understand their full sourcing powers, they're like, how do you use Boolean? How do you use X-Ray? How do you use various bits and pieces? When they get mm -hmm. stuck, they don't know what to do because the platform's doing it for them. You yeah. need to give them the power of knowledge yeah. so they can competently sit there and go, actually, that result didn't bring back. Oh, it must have been that. Let me try. Let me try yeah. that and see what happens rather than just going, excuse me, sir, please give me more tech because this one's broken, right? Yes. So, yeah. yeah. That's the way to see it and look at it. Yeah. No, and I, I think that makes complete sense, doesn't it, in terms of, um, you know, it, again, it comes back to that, how capable is someone of of using the tech and, and have they got the knowledge to leverage what the tech can deliver back? And and I guess, you know, there's that old thing, that old adage, isn't there, you know, um, rubbish data in, rubbish data out. Yeah. But I, I guess that, you know, that is as relevant to this conversation really, isn't it? You know, in terms of the quality of, of the knowledge, the skill of the person to use, you know, Boolean and then actually put the right kind of like search string in across the different kind of like platforms as, as you've been describing, really. And it can be hard, right? That can, that just that sentence alone can feel really overwhelming for people. But I think that's just because, again, people just feel like Boolean is the hardest thing in the world. And I yeah. always bring back this really simple analogy of every single day you are running Boolean strings in your head every single day, right? You got, up, you got up this morning and you were like, right, do I want to wear shorts or a t-shirt or a dress, right? It's an all structure, okay? So mm. I want to wear a dress and I'm going out today, so I need to wear some shoes. Do I want high heels, flats, sandals, trainers? Again, oh no, I don't want trainers. Okay, that's a not structure, let's go over here. When you go out for dinner, am I gonna have a start to main course dessert? Oh yeah, I'm gonna have this. Am I gonna have pudding with custard or ice cream? You can hear already there's lots of ores. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And I think when you when you look at your team and go, this is what it is. This is all it is. All I'm going to do is help you take the information you have in your possession. So it tends to be your job description when you first get going. I'm going to yeah. help you strip it. I'm going to help you just get the buzzwords out. Mm. And then I'm going to help you think about this as if you're a candidate. You're just going to add some walls in, add some walls and knots just to change the parameters on whether it's a critical feature or nice to have. And all of a sudden... Your team aren't sitting there going, this is overwhelming. They're sitting there going, actually, I've just seen a typo over there. I'm going to add it into my Boolean string. 
they're leaning into the data they see every single day. Yeah. Like every creator goes, oh, that cl- that candidate's turned me on, turned me off. What was in their profile? What did you fall in love with? What did you hate? Now let's just add that word and add it to the right place. And all of a sudden, your search has got smarter and yeah. you can use it again in the future, right? We're not talking about building a string a thousand times a day, which is what a lot of recruiters do, right? They'll walk into each of these platforms and write them as if they've never done the job before. But it's about building a string and enriching it and let it grow and develop. So when a role does mm. come back on, you literally go, oh, I did that role last I week. That. Let's go. And then let's yeah. build on top of it. And yeah. that, like, that's where people fall out of love with Boolean and fall out of love with sourcing mm. because they're just like, oh, I have to write the string again. It's like, no, 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 stop writing it from scratch every time, please. Put the legwork mm. in up front and then just let it grow and evolve and enrich. And all yeah. of a sudden, going to be hunting with so much speed and accuracy against Mm. some of these big massive monster recruitment agencies out there right there's monster desks yeah you're sitting with a single a solopreneur a couple people in your team and you're absolutely owning the search and you've got your companies going how did you beat them and you're like i learned how to hunt effectively through my platforms and that's it it's not it's not rocket science it's super Mm. simple and 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 it is simple isn't it and you know something that you know, I was thinking about as I was just sort of listening to you there is that word thinking, mm. you know, it, it's about so often, you know, in, in lots of different contexts, you know, I, I might hear people say, I can do that in my sleep. Yeah. And, you know, I, I do that without, without thinking about it. And, and, and actually what it made me think as I was listening to Gabby was, I want people to be thinking. And what you're talking about is actually getting people thinking about what they're doing, you know, pay more attention to, you know, perhaps things that, you know, that are popping out in CVs or what's switching them off um, and and taking note of that and, and putting it into a search and stuff. So being, I guess, more thoughtful and considered because one of the things that, I think sometimes we get at the effect of because of tech um, is in many ways it's doing the thinking for us. If you think about chat GPT, yep. you know, and, and some of some of the AI and everything, it's almost kind of like devaluing the fact that we think. Um, yeah. And I think that's that's kind of like a risk and a downside that, that we stop thinking. It really is. And I think the thing that scares me most about it is I've obviously played it, spent a lot of time building Boolean strings in various chat GPT, Bard, you name it. I've spent lots of time. Yeah. I think there is a common theme here where a lot of people are like, well, it's smarter than me. And it's like, yeah, but you'd have to deliver 60 prompts to get it to be as smart as you. And if Mm. it's going to take you 60 prompts to get it to be as smart as you, that means you're smarter than in it on prompt one. Yeah. And that's the thing I think so many people in society have forgotten. And I think with that, especially in the world of sourcing, right, there's very few people that are like, oh, my gosh, I could source all day, every day. And it's my buzz. Right. There's a very niche group of people that feel like that. And there is far more recruiters out there like, oh, I have to go through this process. I want to get through it as quickly as possible. Yeah. And get to the end. Get get to the end. Then I can talk to the person I want to talk to. And that's the bit. And then they're like, let's go you can't eliminate this front end but i think when you stop people using their minds and you almost you're almost making them dumb you're almost treating mm-hmm. them like they're dumb they get turned off even more from sourcing because yeah. they're like well that thing's smarter than me no chat gpt is not smarter than you sweetheart like i can promise you that you know more about your industry you know more about how your candidates refer to themselves because you speak to them every day and you've been in yeah. this industry long enough to go oh I know a candidate called themselves, right, fill in the gap, whatever the word is, right? And ChatGPT doesn't know that. So yes. by giving your team the investment of going, do you know what? I want to help you level up. Do you know what that mm-hmm. does for a person? They suddenly go shoulders back. My company wants Absolutely. to invest in me to be better. Yeah. And in doing that, you encourage them to think. You encourage them to push boundaries because mm. as soon as they stop thinking, and this comes back to the point I was making earlier, when they run a search in a platform and it doesn't give the results they want, 
when you have a recruiter who has been allowed to stop thinking and stop being nurtured to push boundaries, they just go, yeah, it didn't work. Yeah. Right. And you have this like, can't do anything about it. Right. Where if you're investing in and you give them the tools to go, actually, that didn't work. But that level of inquisitive of actually, if I do this, will I unearth this? So not only do they get that speed to finding that talent, they just get that like, I don't know, they become like mini detectives. But they want to do it because they yes. know what they're doing. They're empowered yeah. to just be nosy. And when they find that candidate that no one else has found, and I mean, we did it. I remember, I always tell this story when Mitch was looking for a candidate and he added a typo into one of his Boolean strings because he fat fingered it. He wrote something and was like, that's not how you spell it. And I went, no, 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 don't delete it. Keep it and then Use write it. the correct spelling because I bet you if you yeah. done it, someone else has done it. He did it in two weeks when he made 35 grand. Because no one else had found that candidate. No one else had spoken to that candidate. And it was a two-week notice period because we were working a US role. Right? Wow. It's those moments where you go, yes, no one's found them. No one's found you. Let's go. But you have to embed that investment in people. You have to yeah. give them the passion of, I know you can do this. Let's go. Let's level up and make them nosy again. I think we're just trying to dumb recruiters down too much. And I think it's the wrong direction. Mm. We need to invest lift them up and then set them off flying they're inquisitive little buggers let them go that's why they do their job why that's why yep. they're good recruiters because they talk to candidates like they want to learn about them bring that into their world of sourcing and you'll see a whole different game a whole different game fantastic and so if people want to come like um you know get in touch with you find out a little bit more about about you guys and what you do and you know i know you mentioned kind of like the the um the 30 minute kind of like, you know, quick audit that you do, um, which, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, if someone's considering sort of like investing in sourcing tech and everything, how do they get in touch with you, Gabby? Oh my gosh. So you can connect with me on LinkedIn because I spend way too much time on there. Don't just connect with me though. Come and say hello. Come and say hello to me. Come and message me and say, Gab, this is what I'm trying to do. Can I pick your brains? Because my brain is yours to be picked. Um, alternatively, head to the Tooled Up Raccoons website. You go and have a little bit of a mooch around, see what we're all about. Or you can give me a call, right? My mobile number is 07870-142-622. Okay, so just call me. Honestly, call me, Brilliant. contact me, just shout, I'm there. That's fantastic. Well, listen, I, I know that there is, I know we've scratched the surface of this topic and there's so much more that we could talk about. Um, and we will talk when, uh, when we're together in November. So I'm looking forward to that. But listen... <laughs> Thank you for your time today. Um, I think you will have got a lot of people listening, um, really thinking and um, probably going and kind of like checking the kind of Boolean searches that they're doing amongst as well, looking at their tech, their tech stack. So thanks for today and um, we'll see you soon. Well, thank you so much for having me and I'll see you in November. See you in November.